Hello and welcome back to another episode of Forge Talks. I know a lot of you will have missed your Forge Talk fix last week, but don't worry, I'm back with a great episode and hopefully you all enjoyed Identity Live Cloud Edition last week. Uh, if you did miss that, then um, you can view all the presentations on demand. I'll pop a link on screen for you. So guests, Forge Talk guests were on special offer. There were two for the price of one today. I'm very fortunate to be joined by uh, Jeff, who is Director of Product Marketing, and Ludovic, who is Director of Product Management here at Forge Rock. Gentlemen, welcome to Forge Talks. Great to be here. Thanks for having us, Fraser. It's my pleasure. And... Um, so, gents, today we're talking about directory services, and I, I spend a lot of my own personal time contemplating directory services. So, As tell we me, all do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, tell me and tell the audience, please, what are directory services and why should I care about them? First of all, let's talk about what is a directory. It's a, it's a data store. It's a database, right? So we've, we've all dealt with these things in our, our personal lives, and we certainly, as we interact, with our work applications, uh, those things, those applications are going out to these directories, these data stores, and verifying that we are the legitimate users that we say we are. And the challenge and the reason we're here talking with you today, Frazier, is that directory services are kind of under siege, if you will. Because when you think about what's going on in the world, um, Cloud is exploding, applications are exploding, the number of users being added to the database is exploding. And when we talk about directory services, we're talking about that layer of software that actually is able to go and retrieve and, and find out who that user is and then make sure that they get, they're authenticated and they get the access that they need in a quickly and timely manner. And so, what is the evolution of directories with digital transformation and the move to the cloud? Well, if I, if I could, you know, here in North America where I'm at, it's, uh, it's getting colder, right? And, and leaves are coming off the trees, so to speak. So I have a little analogy uh, for our audience for uh, what's going on. Now, I, I will say, <laughs> I, will say I, I blew the budget uh, for our, our marketing here. So now Halloween, <laughs> Halloween's coming up. Uh, for uh, so imagine this is a cauldron now um, Frazier I, I know that you you skip Shakespeare in school so um, if you remember uh, you know the witches brewing the cauldron in Macbeth you have the eye of newt you know toe of frog uh, uh, that sort of thing well think about what's going on out there you know right now you have you know users out out there so you got your users right and these include your workforce users you know, as well as everyone else, you know, uh, consumers. So those go into the call. Now you have these users and they have their personalization data. So what do these users prefer? How do they prefer to access? You know, there was a time 30 years ago when it was just the username and their phone number, you know, when these were telecom directories. Now this has exploded to everything else. You have your app data, so application data, all these apps that we're using, they go in there as well. And lastly, but not least, you got your, your IoT. So we put them in this cauldron here, we brew them all around, and uh, what do you get? You got a witch's brew of, uh, of confusion out there. And, uh, you know, as Ludo is going to talk about in a second, you know, you have within data centers and between data centers, you have a lot of latency, and you got a lot of slow speeds and things going on there. Witch's brew. <laughs> I love it. And I love an analogy. So uh, what are the risks then of, of doing nothing? Well, you know, doing nothing. I, the writer H.L. Mencken said that for every uh, complex problem, there is a solution that is easy, simple and wrong. <laughs> you know, and when you look at it that way, what we see with our directory services customers is they really do two things. The first is they do nothing. Right. So status quo everything's working fine. Why should I touch my, my data store? Why should I, you know, mess with that? Um, and that's really the wrong way to look at it because, you know, look, everything we put in this witch's brew cauldron here, IOT, the users, the apps, they're still growing and they're going to continue to grow exponentially. Secondly, um, you know, talk about easy, simple and wrong. Uh, 
another thing that our, our customers think is that, they, that it's a binary thing. They either you know completely upgrade their directory services or they they stay with their legacy uh, IAM. And and that's a, a false analogy because you can actually run the two, coexist side by side, and migrate your apps over one at a time, ten at a time, fifty at a time. You know, go at your own pace and then completely cut over whenever you're ready. Okay, cool. And so what's the containerization movement and are directories moving then in that direction as well? Well, F Fraser, the uh, containerization movement is really uh, a new technology that is coming out uh, in the, the recent years that allows you to put your application in a cloud, but in any cloud, so you're not attached to a specific vendor. Uh, the containers, they're coming in a, a form of product like Docker and Kubernetes. Uh, and really what it means, it, it means that you write your application, you develop your, your image once, and you can run it in Azure, in Google Cloud, in Amazon. You can run it on your private cloud. You can run it on your laptop almost the same way. So that's really uh, a key aspect to it. Now, the interesting thing about the containerization, it was studied for applications that we say are stateless, your web apps, uh, microservices, very small applications that don't need access to data and not really well suited for databases um, like directory services. But in the most recent years, there's been tech advance in technology about how to manage with disk and persistence data. And now what we're seeing is the new generation of directory services can run in containers in a very, very automated way and a very reliable way. Okay, and so what, what's the benefit of that then? Well, there's multiple benefits into moving your directory services to containers. I think the first one is really uh, you have a, a way to build, deploy your directories on any anywhere you want without it being attached to a vendor. Uh, so that's a key benefit. But the other one is um, containers and Kubernetes will bring you also the automation for deploying and uh, the lifecycle of your applications. Um, and it, 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 the real benefit of automation is actually it comes with the product itself as code. So there's one way to automate the deployment of directory services into uh, containers. And that way is the same for all our customers. And it comes with the product. So the customers don't have to reinvent the automation. It really makes things uh, much uh, more efficient to run and uh, also uh, less, uh, less expensive for our customers. Oh, so a better return on investment. Yeah. yeah. And if I may as well, Fraser, you know, to follow on to what Ludo was saying, you know, when you look at what's going on with our IT customers, uh, you know, the last thing they want to do is increase, you know, their spend towards infrastructure, towards databases, database management, and, and that. And, and what containerization really gets them is that ability to automate, you know, to auto discover, to auto scale. And so you essentially don't have to be a database expert in order to really efficiently run and scale uh, directory services in containers across and within data centers. So it's a huge advantage to customers um, and a great ROI story for them as well. Mm. Okay, and so data needs to be secured in the cloud. How can I give direct access securely then to my applications? Well, um, the, the best way to do that is actually, first of all, you must protect the data in your directory service. Um, and so the, the, the main aspect to protection is you, uh, data protection on disk at rest, uh, encryption all the way to it. But that's not enough. Uh, what you want to make sure is you cannot have someone that comes and can access, compromise the machine on where the directory is running. Right. So what we can do is actually give a front door access to that, uh, to that directory. And that basically putting a directory proxy server in front, and that will be the public access to uh, the directory behind very well protected uh, within the cloud, within your data centers. And so the proxy gives you that single point of access where we can enforce additional security uh, to make sure that only you and the legitimate users can access the data in a very secure way. Awesome. 
Okay, and then one final question for you then, if you don't mind. Who who should be worrying about directory services and what is what what should be their very next step after they finish watching this video? So who should be worried about the directory services? I think um, anyone who has identity data um, and it's storing it either in a database or in a current directory service that is like was built 10 years ago or 15 years ago, they should really care about that, uh, that what we're saying and then think about uh, what it means to move their identity data, the most important data about all their users, their employees, um, into the cloud in the most secure way uh, and in a way also that enables them to um, automate their deployment, make it simple, easy, and very cost effective. Yeah, exactly. And I would just add on to that, Frazier, you know, we talk about directory services in, in kind of three different buckets. You know, we say that they are, you know, secure, resilient, and cloud scalable. So if you're looking for lightning fast retrieval of your identity related information that scales across your data centers, you know, you should really take a look at Fordrock. And you can do that, by the way, by going out to our website and getting started. Uh, go to fordrock.com slash modernize dash IAM. We have some information there as well as information in our product section on everything Ludo and I have talked about today with our directory services. Amazing very clear differences between the product management answer and the marketing answer there. Uh, so <laughs> thanks so much, gents, for that. Guys, thank you so much for uh, taking us through uh, directory services and thank you for brewing us. Uh, <laughs> that uh, wonderful potion, um, right. which we will all ingest now. <laughs> Guys, Cold hope brew. you enjoyed. Yeah, exactly. Uh, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that episode and um, make sure to check out the links that are on screen now to find out more information. But otherwise, I will see you next time.